Hi friends! I am so excited you're here today because I'm going to talk about all the books I read in July. Uh, July ended up being a really fun uh, reading month for me and a good reading month for me. I think I read 19 books which is just a sweet number for me. That's where I want to be. <laughs> um, so uh, let's get right into it. The only um, readathon thing I did was Giallo July, and I'm working on that vlog because I did it all month. Whenever I read or watched something Giallo, I filmed it. So hopefully that will be out soon. I'm nervous about that because it's like a weird mix of Halloween hunting too, because it was all month. So. <laughs> Uh, let's get right into it, starting off with Home is Where the Bodies Are by, is it Geneva Rose? Uh, this was a Libby hold for me. I love the cover. I love the vintage vibes. This is a thriller about um, a parent dying and the siblings having to come together and they find this tape and there's like a crime on the tape. I won't go into detail with what it is, uh, but I did enjoy this. I did. I thought it was a fun listen when you're out running around doing Halloween decor hunting and running errands or cleaning or something when I was listening to this. I was in it. Um, it was a bit predictable though and I don't know. I didn't feel connected to any of the characters too much either um, but that's thrillers typically are very hit or miss for me so I ended up giving this one three stars and then this was a rollover from June. I was like, what is that month? Um, I started You Like It Darker by Stephen King. This is the new short story collection. Uh, and it was really rough to get through, but short story collections are tough for me in general to get through. Uh, so yeah, I just had a tough time with this one. I didn't really like the Cujo story in this. The, um, uh, is it the uh, I don't even remember the name of it. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's so many names in this. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't a huge, huge fan, sadly. Um, there's one story in here. Did I write it in my journal? Oh yeah, my theme for July was Nightmare on Elm Street from my glam light. Um, <laughs> I cut out um, some of the packaging and used it for my journaling. Um, anyways, so you like it darker. I think I liked the dreamers, which was towards the end. And that was my favorite story, but I also liked Danny, um, Coughlin's bad dream a lot. Um, yeah, the dreamers. So it is rattlesnakes is the name of the sequel to that. I didn't really like it. There was some creepy imagery in it that I wasn't expecting, but other than that, I was just like bored. Um, but I really liked the dreamers a ton i want the dreamers to be a movie or something or i would love to see this adapted into like a, sh a like a show kind of like uh uh, uh gilmo del toro's uh nightmare of curiosity or uh cabinet of curiosities or something like that oh, i would love that i would watch it for sure would i be excited about all the other stories in this that i didn't really care for no but i'd still watch it but the dreamers five stars. I freaking love that. Um, but yeah, I ended up giving the whole collection 3.5 stars and I'll round up to four on Goodreads. And then one of my favorite books I ended up reading of the year, one of my favorites of the year, which if you're wondering where my favorites of the year are, it's coming. It should be out this month, hopefully. Uh, but anyways, it's Brainworms by Allison Rumsfit. And yes, both of these actually would work for Jihalo July with the animals on the cover. I love this book. It was fantastic. I feel like I've talked about this book a ton already this month, but I, I actually haven't because it's in the Jihalo July vlog. Um, I was laughing so, so hard at this book. I was laughing so hard. I was crying. And then I would be gagging one moment. You know, your typical emotions. <laughs> okay. uh, so this, we follow Frankie, who is just an amazing character. One of my favorite characters. Hilarious. Hilarious character. Uh, and uh, she ends up meeting um, a new, I don't want to, it's not even her partner. It's like just a uh, a hookup or I don't know like she meets somebody and stuff starts happening uh and there's like all this other 
stuff going on on the outside uh, and it just gets very very weird let's just say that it just gets very very weird and if you like the movie society you'll love this because i think it's much better than that movie uh but yeah it goes there i love the satire in it five stars um seriously like a must read for everybody yes everybody read this disgusting book it's great uh and then what what other book did i read <laughs> that was kind of weird um you always try to kill me in your dreams by a Carl carlton Maylock. I believe it's the third uh but this was so fun this is a little bizarro horror book um this is about a, a guy going to college and it's in the future where everything's super inflated so they're like oh my gosh how much is a stick of gum oh it's just ten thousand dollars um which i thought was really funny <laughs> uh but overall I will say I liked it at the beginning and then it was just like okay for me where it ended up uh, so I ended up giving it three stars definitely very weird and bizarre and I love bizarro horror so I am excited to read more bizarro horror this year I've realized it's something like it doesn't always hit but I always enjoy it like it's never been something where I read it and I'm like I didn't like it at all you know what I mean like it's always a fun time for me and I think that's just because I'm just so weird that's probably it uh and then I read horror movie for Summerween by Paul Tremblay I listened to the audio I am working on getting my little hands on a copy because I just want to see the copy like kind of what I did with Paul Bear's Club I went and like looked at it at a bookstore to like see what um the edited pages look like because I know there's edited pages in this for the screenplay part uh, but I absolutely loved this too it's such a unique take on the author theory which I thought was a spoiler in my summer ween vlog so I didn't even bring that up but the author theory or the auteur theory is like one of my favorite tropes ever if you guys know how much i love like stories of artists and stuff uh this is one of those stories but it's told in a really unique way it's told like from three or four different perspectives so we get the main perspective of an audiobook of the cast member of the movie of the horror the cursed horror movie and you get the screenplay part of them um, reading and editing the screenplay and then you get the actual part of the movie itself uh, and yeah I just loved that type of storytelling it was it wasn't even amb amb ambiguous as Paul Tremblay usually is like with the ending and everything I was just like mm, I have goosebumps thinking about it uh, I am so excited to see what Paul Tremblay does next because seriously all of his books have been so different and so interesting I'm just here for it. I love it. Um, but yeah, again, the auteur theory is something I am kind of obsessed with. <laughs> so it definitely worked for me. I could see it not working for other people though. Uh, but five stars. What a great author. So great. Um, and then I read Heads Will Roll. This was a new, um, a new slasher that came out uh and it is uh, about a a camp where like celebrities are going to like detox uh and or you know away from a scandal or something and we're following some a child star who like had a scandal on like twitter or something and then there's a slasher that is happening this one got really weird i wasn't expecting it to get as weird <laughs> as it was there was some really fun tropes and like fun kills in it and i gave it four stars definitely worth checking out if you're looking for like a summer horror book to end the summer with uh it was a lot of fun so i'm reading my little log in my journal and i'm like what the hell's the midnight feast and i'm like oh yeah that's the new lucy foley thriller that i read for summer week <laughs> um i'll link my summer ween vlog down below because honestly that happened at the beginning of july i have no memory really um i did enjoy uh midnight feast i obviously did i gave it like 3.5 round up to four on goodreads stars i don't remember a ton about it though <laughs> i remember it's like some resort and stuff happened in it you know stuff happened in that book um that thriller um i do remember liking it though because lucy foley does the red herring so well and i remember 
I was like, I honestly, I had no clue with this one. So I did enjoy that one. Uh, and then, so Witches We Became is another new book. This is a YA supernatural book uh, by Jill Bag Baguchinst. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, I did enjoy this one a little young. A little young, a lot of melodrama and very dark. I wasn't expecting this to be so dark. So I think I did like it because of that and ended up giving it four stars. But again, another great summer supernatural horror book. Um, there's some really neat Im imagery in this one. Uh, so definitely worth checking this one out this summer if you um, are looking for more summer horror books. And I read Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. This is the new thriller from him. And whenever I hear this title, I want to sing a song, but I, I think it's like a Lion King song or something, right? In the middle of the night. Is that, a, is that Lion King or is that just Elton John? I don't remember. But anyway, it's <laughs> this one. Um, it was okay. It was okay. For me I feel like th this is an episode of The Simpsons okay <laughs> I'm just gonna say that Simpsons did it um I know I haven't said that a in a while about a book but this is legit episode the Ralph Wiggum and Bart Simpson episode um when they are forced to become friends that is, there is literal scene by scene stuff that happens in that episode that happens in this book and I'm just like Riley Sager Simpsons did it sir um so three stars I did enjoy it it's just an easy listen you know sometimes you just need a thriller in your life to listen to <laughs> so yeah but the Simpsons did it I ended up listening to Where He Can't Find You by Darcy Coates this is Darcy Coates YA book that I was totally sleeping on and I was like playing Animal Crossing and I was like I need something to listen to so I'm being productive too right I loved this. I had a blast with this YA book. Okay, it is a YA book, but it's dead serious, and I loved that. Uh, I think I talked about it in the Giala July vlog. Sorry, that's not out yet, but um, so Darcy Coates, I know, is not American. I believe she's Australian, and this takes place in New Jersey, I think, and like New Jersey suburbs or like outskirts, like small town ma'am uh just a word of advice if you're gonna write about an american town uh when stuff starts getting weird in america people usually have guns most likely will always have a gun so i to not have any guns in this book that i remember i was like where are the guns uh so that just stuck out but i absolutely love the story i love the lore i love the mystery i loved the characters so so much five stars fantastic there is a scene in this that gave me nightmares I'm pretty sure so good job Darcy Coates but again America is guns so <laughs> then I finally got to an arc that was sent to me I got to serial publication by Andrew Adams and this was really interesting uh like serial killer detective story if you don't like detective stories I would say stay away from this one uh but it was fun it was kind of flipped on its head at like a reality tv show uh situation and I flew through this um the font is really big though uh which I appreciate thank you uh, so I ended up giving this one three stars. I enjoyed it. It was like an easy read to read at night uh, and I had fun with it. So thank you so much uh, and definitely check out Andrew Adams, uh, a little indie author and yeah a very interesting uh, story for sure. One of my most disappointing reads which is kind of sad because I really like this author and I was really looking forward to uh, her new release and that's The House That Horror Built by Christina Henry. Uh, I was very disappointed with this one. Um, the more I think about it too, I don't think I was as disappointed if I talk about this in my Geology July vlog. I don't think I was that disappointed at the time but the more I think about it I'm just like more and more disappointed. <laughs> So I think I'm giving this one, I think I originally gave it 2.5. I think it's a little lower. I think it's definitely going to be a two star for me. Um, just because there's still some stuff that annoys me about it. So uh, yeah, I won't get into 
details uh, about it. I might talk about it a little bit more in that vlog. Um, sorry to keep referencing that vlog, and it's not out yet. <laughs> Something to look forward to, I guess. Uh, let me see, what is next? Um, and then, okay, a book that absolutely scared me this month. <laughs> And I know, I know I'm not the only one. And that's Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. <sighs> you guys, this book unnerved me to a point where I was listening to it and I walked in um, the bedroom and Alex was in the bedroom playing video games. I screamed. I screamed so loud. I didn't know he was in there. He was like, what is going on? And I'm like, I'm listening to a scary story. Okay, so you're following an eight-year-old girl's perspective. So if you don't like child perspectives, you're not going to like it. I could see how it can get annoying, but it actually worked for me in this one. And it was even more creepier from her point of view. And there's another mommy uh, entity that keeps asking, uh, I think her name is Bella, to go into her heart. She's like, can I go into your heart? And Bella's like, no, I'm good. Um, basically to possess her. I was terrified. Uh, so scary. And then it just kept escalating and escalating and escalating. Um, I will say the mom in this is so grating. I'm like, oh my gosh, geez, be more of a mom. Why don't you? Um, and uh, the dad was cool. Uh, but th yeah, just that character was like a lot. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I did really like this. The ending, I wasn't a huge fan of the ending, uh, but I get why it happened, of course. Uh, so I think I'm leaning towards like a 4.5. I don't know. It just, it was so effective. So it's tough not to give it five stars just for that, but there's some stuff about it that I didn't like. But overall, it was a blast. I highly recommend reading if you're the, doing the audio. It's so submersive. I even hear the physical book too. You're like sucked in too. So um, if you're looking for a good scare, that is the one. And then I read The House Next Door by Anne River Sutton. I'm glad to get to this. This is my 24 and 24. And it was Kelsey from Slime and Slasher's book club pick, I believe for May. So I'm only like two months behind on that uh and i uh, i enjoyed this i did the audio on youtube uh but i don't know it was like it was tough to get through i'm gonna say that because it was kind of boring it was like i don't really care about these rich people you know and like the house next door like people have like bad luck or whatever in it but it did get it did get more than that it got pretty violent and stuff but I'm like I don't I just wanted more like scary stuff but I get why in reverse um Siddons wrote this I know she's a romance writer um I get why she wrote this and you do feel the love in this relationship I did really like this relationship of the married couple who didn't have children and like just were so content with each other it was like it was so cute, you guys. I was like, I'm not a romance girly, but I'm rooting for this, this team. Uh, but yeah, I did really enjoy this, but I just wanted more. I, you know, I, you know me, I'm a horror person. I, I needed some scares. Uh, so three stars for sure. And then there's like so much with this, I feel like that I can't get into here. Uh, because I don't know, it hasn't really worked its way out of my head yet, that this is like definitely socioeconomic uh, stuff going on in this for sure. A white plight, possibly people moving away from the cities uh, into suburbia to only kind of be faced with the same things and like sticking up for each other and like I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Is it communism? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but there's something else going on in this, which is a deeper level that I just want to give the author credit for as well. Uh, so yeah, people will probably be like, oh, you're reading a romance novel. Um, and this isn't her romance novel necessarily, but it's like, I wonder if her other books are this deep, you know? <laughs> the pure... I always want to say the piercing. It's just piercing by Ray Mur Murakami. <laughs> and uh, I had a blast with this one. It was so fun. Um, I got to read it at my part-time job and I flew through it. Uh, was this a bit of a love story? Twisted love story. 
yes. Uh, did it go where I needed it to go? Not necessarily, uh, but it does have a big twist in this, which I was like, okay, I'm here for it. I will say I like this one um, a little less than Audition. If I'm comparing all of Murakami's books that I read, which are three, I definitely like this one more than in, in the Miso Soup, and I like Audition more than this one slightly, but this one I feel like stands on its own. I don't know. It's just a, an interesting story for sure, and um, kind of with the same tone and themes of his other books, but just done in a different way if that makes sense, without giving anything away in this, because I think you should go in totally blind, other than knowing that this man has horrible thoughts about harming his baby. Four stars. I had a blast. And then Ocean Grave by Matt Serafini. Uh, I actually ended up reading this on my Kindle because look at this font. Okay. I don't know what happened to the margins of this, margins. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the butter of this book, but it's just not, did not work for my eyes. So I ended up reading it on my Kindle. And if this story was only about a giant fish, I'd be here for it. But it's not. It's about pirates. <laughs> and I can't say that with a straight face. Because it's so serious, too. It's, like, so serious. I, I think, too, I gave this a higher two star. I think I'm leaning towards two stars though for it uh just because it got really bogged down with the whole pirate stuff I was like dude I don't need the pirates just give me the big fucking fish I don't need the pirates okay um and then I read The Perfect Victim by David Sodergren a blast I loved it uh this is a kidnapping story which I don't like kidnapping stories for some reason they just never work for me in a horror uh I've I've mostly been bored by kidnapping stories, honestly, but this one was just so campy and like the girls in this, like their relationship was, it, it felt like actually really well fleshed out for a man writing female relationships because it wasn't like it was more complex than it was like oh we're just best friends you know it was it was more complex and had uh different levels and i thought that was really interesting uh and where this one goes it's one of my favorite tropes so you guys know it's gonna love it um and honestly i gave it five stars I gave it five stars. I loved it. Um, a little short read. Um, and I love a solder grid now. I just, they're like palate cleansers now at this point. It's like, give me the solder grid book. No, serious. I'm being serious. Give me it. Uh, so, uh, I think that's it. Oh, no. I read The Folly by <laughs> Gemma Moore. I listened to this one on Everand. And it's a little novella. And it's about this woman who um, is taking care of her dad who's released from prison for the murder of her mother. But it was like he got out because they didn't have enough evidence against him. And they go to this folly to take care of it. And the atmosphere is great. Uh, and there's literally the creepiest thing I have read other than incidents in the house. Like in a while. Like happens in this book and I'm like excuse me miss Amore I'm freaked out this one again got under my skin for a, a new numerous reasons um but the ending just didn't work for me as well either I feel like it just kind of fizzled out a bit uh so I ended up giving this one like 3.5 four stars I still really enjoyed it um and yeah it was very creepy very creepy but yeah the ending I don't know. I don't know. The ending just didn't work for me. It might be something I'm still processing though. So, but definitely check it out if you're into like supernatural horror, uh, complex, like kind of family relationships too. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting take on, um, just, um, you know, your average, your average family, maybe not. Uh, and then I read, I think this is the last one, the last house no, The Last House on the Left. No, I did not read that. Uh, the House of the Last Resort by Christopher Robert. No, that's not his name. Golden. 
Um, this is uh, Golden's newest book. I haven't been a huge, I'm not a huge fan of this author. His books feel very mediocre to me every time, but you know what? They're easy, they're fun, they're horror books. I'm here for it. This felt more like a thriller book than a horror book for me and it did get kind of crazy. I was like okay this is kind of crazy but it's also insanely predictable and, <laughs> and the main characters in this I was just like you guys are so dumb. You're so dumb. I did like that this was based off of something real. Like I know in Italy there's like an island where the mayor was selling off like old houses for a euro uh, to get people like back in the community and stuff and that's what this these people do and they try to like they have all these ideas for like the community. One of them being opening up the catacombs for tourism. Okay, sounds like a great idea. Sounds like the whitest of the white person idea to ever do is to move to Italy and be like, let's open up this ancient catacomb for tourism. <laughs> okay, that's it's gonna work out for ya. It's gonna work right out for ya, okay. Uh, so needless to say, it was pretty mediocre and predictable, but I enjoyed it still. It was fun, it was kind of campy. Uh, so three stars for The House of Last Resort. Uh, and that is it for my July reading vlog. I'm out of breath, I'm sweaty. Um, I did it though, I read some freaking books. And let me know what was some of your favorite reads in July, or did you watch any Giallo's in July? My favorite movies this month you know was long legs i love long legs so much i love os perkins i also really really loved maxine and i was so happy about those two movies what a great month for ho new horror movies uh i was like so stoked uh, those movies were great. Anyways, that is the end of this wrap up and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye!